everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I, we went international this episode. We are bringing in all the way from Canada, <laughs> someone who I've really just grown to admire first from a professional standpoint, seeing what she's been able to do with Strong Magazine, but then getting to know her on a personal level and her amazing Aww. sense of humor. Like <laughs> we had so much fun when we got to connect in, in Phoenix for a Fitposium. So oh, I'm wow. <laughs> so grateful to have you here. Thank you so much. Literally, I'm I'm so excited for this. Um, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of you and everything you've been doing and watching your brand grow has been so exciting. So I'm like, yeah. seriously, this is the highlight of my week. <laughs> oh, well, same. Seriously. It's so fun to have this platform. One of the reasons I love having a podcast is, you know, we are all busy and having an intentional way to connect with women who I do admire and just glean some of their wisdom because we all have it. We all have things that we can contribute to the world and, and getting to offer that to a bigger platform. And women mm-hmm. who may not be aware of Strong Magazine or you or what, what is actually happening there. Um, now, I, I actually have a background in the fitness industry, which is roundabout why we even connected. Right. I'm competing. There was a day where like, having a like a magazine cover or feature was like very much the the track I thought I was on even though I pivoted like fitness will always be the thing that for me created confidence Mm -hmm. created purpose in my life so whenever I get to connect with fellow fitness enthusiasts it's really fun yeah I think that we sort of have that in common um you know coming from a more strict um, or exclusive definition of Mm -hmm. fitness and coming from that world and then seeing how you sort of jump off of it. Um, It's like a springboard into other things. I think, you know, the definition of fit and the fitness industry has evolved in a very healthy way. I think it's all going towards something great, but we don't define ourselves that way anymore, but it is um, sort of the thread that connects us all. And I, I love seeing that. Yeah, which I think is actually the perfect place to start because Mm -hmm. your journey has evolved from what at one point was my favorite fitness magazine, Mm -hmm. Oxygen Magazine, (laughs) some people may know, to now Strong Magazine, which is my new favorite fitness magazine. Oh, thanks. But but truly, and I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you. Right. I think your what you've done with Strong and the entire team is you actually have brought the fitness conversation to match what's happening among women in the world. So Mm -hmm. I actually just want to hear more from the standpoint of as editor, editor editor-in-chief is the official Mm -hmm. title, correct? Uh, Yeah, officially. (laughs) Officially official. I was like, I do have your business card. Remember when I was trying to impersonate (laughs) you? (laughs) I was giving out your business card to people telling you I was telling them I was you. I don't remember why, but so... As editor, what has this journey looked like as far as founding a brand new publication? And this is a a print publication when people Mm -hmm. were saying that industry was going the other way, like about to go out. Mm -hmm. Which was definitely part of (laughs) the challenge uh, when we launched this seven years ago. Um, Yeah. And as you mentioned, I worked at Oxygen and as did... um, my, a lot of my colleagues, uh, we used to work together. And, um, you know, I owe so much to that time in my life because I learned so much about fitness. I became really passionate about it. I wasn't actually athletic uh, growing up. Um, and I sort of fell into it and realized why well, I really love it. I feel like I really belong here. And um, Oxygen really helped cultivate that passion. And I learned so much. So, you know, without it, Strong wouldn't exist to be perfectly honest. Um, And yeah, it was definitely challenging. Um, A lot of people don't know that Oxygen actually used to run out of Canada and under Robert Kennedy Publishing. And it went bankrupt uh, around seven years ago. And uh, just a few of us, it was actually Paul Busetta, their chief photographer, approached myself and Aaron Lutz, who um, is our creative director, and said, you know, let's start a magazine. You have the editorial side of things, you have the art side of things, and I'll do the pictures and let's start something. And actually, the original idea was to be digital, which made a lot of sense at the time because digital magazines were sort of all the rage, even though I don't think we've kind of, I don't think we've figured that out 
yet. I don't think it's taking over anytime soon, <laughs> um, the digital magazine thing. But um, that's what was going on then. And Paul said, you know, let's make a digital magazine that's for hardcore fitness industry people. And we were like, okay, well, I don't have a job. So uh, I'm available. Sure. <laughs> Sounds great. So the three of us were the founders, um, you know, have to give them props for sure. And um, very long story short, we decided to go to print instead of digital, which I think was a good idea. Um, but so many people said, you're crazy. I mean, magazines are dying all around you. Why would you do this? And I think really um, what it was is that we saw this gaping hole in the fitness industry on newsstands. And it wasn't just because oxygen was taking a hiatus, um, but it was, there was just things going on. Fitness was evolving in a way that, you know, other publications were not talking about. They were kind of missing the mark. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't taking into account all of the ways women were embracing fitness outside of just, you know, going to gym and like lifting some weights with my personal trainer or like going to a step class or, you know, competing in a 5k or something like women were really going for muscle and wanting to understand the science of their bodies. And we wanted to provide them the information they needed to make those decisions for themselves and improve themselves and hit their goals as well as talking about their health and their mental health and aging um, in a healthy way. And then, you know, some of the fun stuff. So um, I think as much as it was challenging, it just made sense. And that's sort of why we went for it. But yeah, I mean, it's a print in industry and it's, it's still a struggle all the time, but I think as long as you keep evolving and, um, meeting your audience needs that there'll always be a place for a publication. Which, and I think that actually translates to any industry, like you're going to evolve and, and your audience evolves too, but staying Absolutely. tuned in to what they want and need, which is what you guys really have done so well. Oh, um, and it's cool to see if you're watching the YouTube version, you can literally <laughs> see these beautiful covers over her shoulder. <laughs> if you're just listening in audio, just imagine um, and when we first connected before we turned on the recording, I said, is it crazy to see all of those covers, you know, seven years worth of hard work, especially mm -hmm. because I know, and I, I would even love if you'd speak to like, there were times I'm sure where you were just not sure if this, like this issue was going to get to print. Like it is an industry of deadlines yeah. and <laughs> chaos. Yeah. I mean, were there any times in those early days where you were just like, not really sure if this was going to pan out. Um, ab oh, absolutely. I mean, still happens. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, this isn't even all of the yeah. magazines. This is not all of them that you see behind me. We're about to, um, we're working on our 40th issue right now, actually, which is crazy. Wow. And I remember when we were first putting our very first issue together and we were shooting a section, like a regular section that we had. And um, Paul or Aaron said, well, why don't we just shoot the next three issues worth in one day. So we have that content banked. And I remember laughing, thinking like three issues, we're not going to make it to three issues. Like we'll be lucky if anybody takes this first one seriously. Um, so it's crazy all the time. And it's, it never stops being like the coolest moment of my life when I see an issue on stands. And like, I know my editor's letters in there. And I know the content we work so hard for is in there. Um, and just you know, I never stop being nervous that, you know, will this resonate? Will people get something out of it? Are they doing the workouts? Um, so, I mean, as stressful as it is all the time, you know, is print going to survive? Will this issue be well accepted? Is this meeting the needs of our audience? It never stops being thrilling and um, never stops. We never stop learning. Yeah. Oh, I'm so grateful that you shared just that perspective to because so many of us can relate. I can relate to that feeling of like, is this going to work out? Mm -hmm. Like we're hosting our next event. Will people still continue to come? And I think just the reminder that those feelings and those fears are like so normal. We're all feeling mm -hmm. them. Yeah. That's oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you are obviously strong magazine is positioned in the fitness industry and mm -hmm. It's been so cool to see that evolution, even what you alluded to already with, you know, more women tapping into strength training and how do you see strong playing a role in really setting the tone for like women's fitness? 
like, what is, what is that vision? Like, what does strong really stand for, for the everyday woman, the athlete, everyone in between? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny that we're called strong fitness magazine because I know the fitness aspect is sort of the driving force, I guess. Um, but sometimes I think we should have just been strong magazine or strong women's magazine because fitness is not our only focus. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's interesting, but I think the goal is always to just be there for that woman who loves working out, but also, you know, the holistic approach to their well being. Um, and yes, we've evolved with the industry, I think, but the industry itself has expanded to include wellness and health yeah. and mental health. You know, everyone's talking about that a lot more. So, um, yeah, I, I just think the goal is to be sort of the personal trainer, the, I wouldn't say nutritionist, but um, <laughs> you're, you know, here's some recipes for you as well as bring you the latest news um, and facts and science. You know, we always look for the most cutting edge sources and studies, the most relevant topics, um, just to bring you the most relevant information so that women can get in, you know, our, our, tag, I guess, or our mantra is um, inspire, educate, and empower. Um, And that's what we hope to do. Sort of like a little, every issue, we're bi-monthly, so every other month. Um, You know, I just hope that it gets you through those two months as being sort of like an all-in-one, all-encompassing wellness guide. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great way to put it. And as you were talking, I thought back to like, especially the issues that I've saved and are still like in Like they're not the ones that are tucked away. They're ones that I will like actively go back to and like like, take a a photo with my phone of a workout and bring that to the gym. They're consistently the magazines that I actually do like pick up and use beyond just flipping through. So you Mm -hmm. guys have done such a great job and and really bringing like such relevant voices, different voices. Uh, It's making me think about it because it's right over your shoulder, the... Um, I think it's the second to last issue with Natalie Jill Mm -hmm. and taking on this topic of like aging and what aging can look like. Was that a fun issue to get to work on? Um, Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I think this was the third year in a row we've done that uh, healthy at any, or yeah, healthy at any age um, special. And it is so fun because I love to be able to talk about fitness in a slightly different way and just it's not about the aesthetic or the results you're going to get right now it's like think of the big picture of your this is your vessel for the rest of your life and how can you take care of it and how important it is but also empowering women of different generations that maybe they can start now or they can get back into it Um, it's never too late and I think for any generation seeing a woman who's in her forties or fifties, who is just like crushing it. And I love Natalie Jill because she started to do these things so much later in her life. You know, she was in her late thirties when she started landing fitness magazines. So fit landing those covers, I think that's inspiring Mm -hmm. to anybody. It doesn't matter your age or your fitness level. So that was a super cool issue. And the age issue always does really well for us. Like, I think it just speaks to so many different, so many different types of women. Yeah, agree. That has been one of my favorites in the last year, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, That's so cool. So we were chatting a little bit before we even started recording, too. And this is something that really was challenging for me in that phase of my life when I was in fitness, Mm -hmm. is to keep my eyes focused on just my own journey instead of, which I was very, very good at, looking around at what other people were doing, other people's bodies, what what results they'd achieved in fitness, and comparing myself, like literally using that to reinforce some story that I wasn't enough, I wasn't good enough. And I even feel, now that for sure still happens, I feel like we're talking about it so much more just Mm -hmm. as, as women. What do you see? I mean, obviously you're literally like putting some of the most fit bodies in the world, like on magazines you're, you're in it. Do, do you feel like we still struggle with that as much as it was prevalent, like let's say 10 years ago? I mean, I think the fact that we're talking about it more, um, and you know, Instagram right now is really all about the transparency, um, Mm -hmm. 
that conversation is happening, I think it helps. Uh, it doesn't, but it's still such a trap, especially for women to compare yeah. ourselves. You know, I, and it, like you were talking about your own fitness journey and how you're comparing your body to someone else's. I think it applies to any goal that you've set for yourself. Um, you know, you're looking at the finish line and where I'm at doesn't look like what someone else is doing. I think that's so applicable to everything we do in our lives. And even with the magazine, I have to catch myself all the time comparing our magazine to what other magazines are doing. And, you know, we, we look nice, but we're a very small team and we're just like doing the best we can. And we don't have the budget or the staff or the resources that these huge magazines that have been around for, you know, 40 years have. And yet here I am comparing our magazine to women's health and Cosmo and, you know, Vanity Fair and all these incredible glossy mags, but not just that, their Instagram too, you know, their Instagram so perfect and curated. So, you know, I think it's it, something we really need to be cautious of. Um, I think that we're doing a better job of saying it's okay to be where you are right now. It's okay yeah. not to be okay. It's okay that you don't look like this person. Where you are in your journey is all that matters. You're doing, you know, this is where you're supposed to be. And I think those messages being repeated is definitely, it's good to see on Instagram or wherever. That's where I see it the most. It helps you yeah. stop and take a minute and be like, oh yeah, it is okay. You know, this is, I am doing the best I can and that's not going to look like somebody else's best. Um, yeah. But I think, I think we can do more and, you know, I'm not sure what that would take, but yeah. it's hard. Yeah. It is, well, it is hard. It's an interesting world. Like I think back to before Instagram where right. I wasn't inundated with, you know, the highlight reel of everyone's life, which I don't, I think I have a healthier relationship now with social media because I, I do realize that of course I'm, I'm putting out like a curated version of my life and I try mm -hmm. my best to share the good and the bad, but it still is such a small sliver of my actual full life. And mm -hmm. so we're just like inundated more than ever that I think talking about it helps talking about the fact that like we all get caught in that trap, but even more so like talking about the tools that we use to overcome it. I think just mm -hmm. individually as women and, yeah, absolutely. and especially for the younger generations, like stopping it before it actually becomes that slippery slope. Yeah. Um, so what about for you? What do you, what do you do when you catch yourself like in that mode of comparing whether it's a, something personal or the magazine, what helps you kind of like get back to just focusing on your own journey and your own lane? Mm -hmm. I think it's important to take social media breaks for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I run the strong fitness magazine account, but my own personal account of kind of taking a little break from, um, I try to be cautious of mindless scrolling. I find that that mm. can become really overwhelming and insanely time consuming. You're like, what? An hour has gone by. I literally haven't done anything. Um, it is, it's extremely difficult. And I think that kind of self-awareness um, is hard to maintain. And I do my best. Um, when it comes to the magazine and comparing myself to other magazines, I always have to come back to those just the reality, you know, we're doing our best with what we have. Um, I don't have the resources of other magazines, you know, the things I listed before. And then I find it also helps to go into, you know, the comments um, on the strong, on some strong posts or uh, our feedback email and just read some of the positive feedback um, sort of just reinforces that, okay, you're doing a good job. It's okay. Relax. You don't need to be women's health. You don't need to be these other magazines that I've looked up to um, because we're doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing, what we've set out to do. And I think that that, you know, that can be really helpful. It's just sometimes yeah. seeing the positive reinforcement because you don't see it every day. You don't, you know, I don't walk down the street and hear people <laughs> like, oh, great job on strong. So <laughs> most kind people, of cool if we did yeah, that would be amazing <laughs> life goals <laughs> oh my god I love that you know it actually reminded me I haven't looked at this folder in a while but I, cr I actually created a folder in my phone where I'll take screenshots of like someone's text message or an Instagram comment or DM sharing 
something like that, right? Um, how something that I did impacted their life. Mm-hmm. And I actually just created a little fo- folder in my phone in under the photo albums that says love folder. Yeah. And there are days right. when I feel usually it's, it's when I'm striving to like grow and I'm stepping into something that's new for me. That's actually where I notice that comparison or just my fear, my insecurity and doubt mm-hmm. is the loudest. And I know that that just means I'm going in the right direction. If something's coming up that fiercely, it usually means that I'm about to do something big. So being able to surround myself, and I, I guess that means I haven't needed it as much, but I haven't looked <laughs> at the love folder in a while. I love that idea, though, and I actually had a friend suggest that to me when I was you know, going through, I was having a rough day with um, something that was you know, going on with some negative feedback or something we'd received. And my friend said exactly that, you know, um, why don't you just put all of your like favorite um, comments and feedback and emails and screen grabs into a folder so you just have a quick place to go. And I thought it was so silly at first. I'm like, am I really going to use this? But it's amazing how mm. just taking a quick glance at it can really, you know, shift your mind frame, shift your mindset yeah. to a more be like, okay, yeah, I can breathe. I'm doing this. It's, you know, I got this. I mean, yeah. It's so easy to negative, to focus on the negative, right? But Oh, isn't that true? You know, what's the saying about like, if there's, you know, a hundred positive comments and one negative one, we zone in on that one. Absolutely. And it's funny you mentioned about like, you know, receiving negative feedback. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about more and more within this community this year is the idea of being bold with our gifts, like really mm-hmm. empowering women to, to not hold back out of fear of criticism, like truly to lean into the impact that they want to make and be more unapologetic, easier said than done. Like to be transparent, it is, it's, it's bold. It's like true warrior work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think about a platform like strong, I mean, the reach that you have and understanding and reminding myself what a small team it is, is it, is it hard not to take and you know, the more negative comments personally, does that hit you? Uh, I've developed a pretty thick skin. There are certain things that can just take the wind out of my sails. Um, but for the most part, you know, if somebody comments and says, I'm going to unfollow you because you posted this or that, um, or because of this article I didn't agree with, I, I realize that, you know, there maybe we're just not meant, we're not, you know, we don't suit their needs and mm-hmm. that person will find them somewhere else, you know, best of luck, but we don't necessarily need them in our strong community. If, yeah. What we're if what we're doing doesn't resonate with them, um, you know. I think one of the hardest things about doing something like strong, and I'm sure you can relate to this, is getting wrapped up in trying to be everything to everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, you just want to keep everybody happy, and that you can drown in that kind of yeah. pressure, right? So um, I just try to, you know, sort of stay in my lane and remember our mantra and always, I always come back to that to refocus and mm. um, yeah. What is the mantra for strong? I would love to know. I don't think I know it. It's um, inspire, educate and empower. Oh, you did mention that. I yeah. love that so much. So much that I was like, Hey, that's actually really similar to our ethos. Maybe <laughs> ours is something similar to that. <laughs> no, but it's true. And I think that's such a great reminder for all of us. Because as we become more bold, as we step into our gifts, it does open up like more opportunities as your platform grows, the more people are going to love you and the more people maybe won't agree or self-select out of your community. Mm -hmm. And just the reminder that we all are on a mission to serve only who we are here to serve. And it's okay that that doesn't include certain people. Easier said than done. I still oh, very much so. Everyone. I would much yeah. prefer if everybody liked me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's just really not going to happen. I love that so much. I know so the much. feeling. I definitely know the feeling. Why doesn't everybody read us? Why doesn't everyone follow us? Yeah. Well, especially when you know the heart behind what it is that you're mm-hmm. creating. So oh, where, where do you see Strong going in the future? What are some of your... So we have this statement, I'm going to, I don't know if you've heard it before, so I'm going to give you the, the like short version of it and then have you answer this. Sure. Uh, your unicorn dream. So you, <laughs> that thing that you're like, wouldn't it be cool if this mm-hmm. happened? Like, wouldn't that just be so cool? What 
is one unicorn dream you have for the magazine for what strong oh wow i don't know if i could choose just one um ultimately i mean just continuing to improve um i think probably the unicorn dream would be to be at the top of the heap so to speak in this industry i want to be um you know the go-to for health and fitness and wellness advice um and information and it's you know it's been a very slow yet organic climb for us and the fact that we are growing and that we're still here in such a tumultuous industry i think says a lot about i you know i am optimistic for the future and I you know I can't speak to other magazines and what's going to happen but if we're the last man standing <laughs> I'm okay with that because I yeah. think that we've we've worked really hard to carve out our place here and um, prove to the world that there is enough room on newsstands and in the industry for something like strong so I guess ultimately that would be my dream is just to be the best yeah. obviously <laughs> to be number yeah. one um but also just, you know, continue to work with um, some, like a variety of athletes. I'd love to work with big name athletes, pair with other brands. I think we're still a little bit on the niche side of things for the bigger athletes and brands to know who we are. But um, yeah. yeah, I think that's what we're working towards. Just become a household name for, for mm-hmm. everyone from the, woman, the mother working out in her living room to Serena Williams. <laughs> Yeah. Um, which is funny you mentioned Serena because I was about to ask you, like, yeah. who is your unicorn dream of like an athlete or personality to see mm-hmm. on the cover? Definitely Serena is a name that's come up Heck yeah. a number of times. Um, you know, J Lo's come up. I will buy that magazine. Yeah, I will buy right? 13 copies of that magazine. <laughs> who wouldn't? Um yeah, those two, those two would definitely be at the top. I mean, there's so many women I yeah. admire, um, and you know, they're athletes, but they're also personalities and philanthropists and teachers. And, you know, um, like we were saying before, fitness is sort of a thread that, uh, unites us, but it's yeah. the thing about strong is just showcasing these different stories. Yeah. Um, so they, you know, we're all sort of athletes, but what else? are you or what else defines you and those are the stories we're trying to tell through strong so there are I mean the number of women that I would love to work with is it's it's a long list (laughs) that is so cool well okay so I made you say it on the podcast because you never know who could be listening right I mean are you out there (laughs) Serena if you're listening JLo I mean first of all let's be friends second of all hit Kirsten up (laughs) But we'll um, to you. <laughs> what's funny, so I share this and um, those who have listened to the podcast before have heard this story because we share about this unicorn, we call it unicorn brainstorming exercise. Legit, no joke, was at a table at a mastermind once and we were doing this exercise mm-hmm. and one of the guys who was in fitness, like huge fitness Instagram following mm-hmm. was struggling a little bit to come up with a like, wouldn't it be cool if, right. and this is always why I talk about the power of this with our community is because finally we got him to say like, okay, fine. Wouldn't it be cool if the rock shared one of my fitness videos Mm -hmm. and at the end of the table, someone goes, well, Hey, we know his PR people. Oh, wow. And so you never know, right. Who could be listening. That's like my, my unicorn brainstorming reminder for today. I love If anyone knows Serena, (laughs) if anyone knows Serena or JLo hit us up. (laughs) I remember, um, we had, um, I think it was this year, Sangeeta Patel, was mm-hmm. one of our cover athletes. She's uh, a celebrity journalist here in Toronto, um, but she's friends with The Rock. And when she posted her cover, he responded to her tweet. So it wasn't quite a retweet, but the fact that he saw the cover and now knew we were in existence, it was, you know, I basically died. <laughs> I think I saw you share that on your yeah. Instagram and was dying with you. Like, I think I shared so it like five times. Cool. <laughs> yep. I'm probably, I'm sure I replied to it because that is the coolest. It and cool. that is what can happen. You know, we talk a lot in Powerhouse Women about how a lot of times we're one conversation away, or if we're willing to share something that other people might think sounds like too audacious Mm -hmm. to have that dream you never know who could connect you with who you need to know in order to make that happen so um I think just like 
kind of bringing this now to a close, like you shared the, like your goal for Strong Magazine. It's something that is so in line with everything that we stand for too. So what are the biggest ways that we as a community can be a part of helping you achieve that goal? I mean, the obvious is like buy the magazine, but like yeah. what are some real ways that women can, if they're resonating with this, just be a part of that mission? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if this sounds like too small scale, but um, we love when people post to their social media platforms when they're using the magazine. So if you've tried a recipe or you're doing a workout or a weekend challenge or anything, you know, when you post things and maybe there's a shot of the magazine in it or yeah. you just mention the, where the workout is from, you know, we love that stuff. We comment, we repost a lot of it. Um, but it also helps spread the word. It just helps get um, get our this amazing publication on people's radar and maybe we can help them as well. Um, so that's one way, you know, and I think if you have a brand like you do and you see a connection there, I mean, if there's any way we can work together, uh, there's so many ways that we can collaborate. And I think that's definitely another way is just, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a monetary kind of, um, not like a way of profiting. I think everybody can benefit from just uh, co-branding, collaborating. So, I mean, I guess those would be two ways. I love that. And it's such a great reminder that something as simple as sharing like our own unique experience with a brand or a product really is, holds such incredible value. It seems so Mm -hmm. small. And to think like, wow, would Strong Magazine even notice if like I was posting the recipe that yeah, like they do. Same with like when people share the podcast, like I yeah. look, I, I don't just look and see each one. Like I actually take a moment and I'm like, wow, a human being yeah. decided to like take 30 minutes to listen to this today. It's very cool. It's a very cool yeah. thing to see someone doing a workout that we posted that we yeah. created. I mean, because you don't, not that many people do it. So yeah, yeah, it definitely stands out. We definitely see it and we do appreciate it. It means a lot. And I love the idea of imagining someone in their living room or at the gym um, using a workout that we put out there. Just, you know, it's that small way that you've impacted someone's life. And that's exactly why we do what we do. Oh my gosh. Well, okay. So let's do something a little bit fun to to really encourage people to do this. This just came to my mind. We didn't even talk about it, but I want you to take a photo. If you're in an airport, if you're in a grocery store, buy the magazine, don't just take a photo with it, but (laughs) post a photo to your social media (laughs) with it. Tag both of us, powerhouse women and, and strong magazine. Strong and Fitness we'll, Mag. Yeah. Strong Fitness Mag. I was going to say, we'll actually link the actual Instagram handle because I knew Perfect. I wasn't getting it quite right. Um, and we're going to do, we're going to give away, I'll, I'll give away a um, year subscription to Strong. If, oh, so we'll love pick it. someone who okay. posts your, their photo and we'll do a fun little giveaway because truly, if, especially if this is a new conversation to you, and I do believe that uh, like our health and fitness is such an integral part of us making the impact that we want to make in the world. We have Mm -hmm. to be honoring the body, the vehicle that allows us to make that impact. So, and Strong Magazine has always been that through line of inspiration in my own personal journey. So thank you. I'm excited to get to share that with um, more of our community as well. And I foresee a lot more collaborations in the future. Oh, I love that. That's a great idea. I'm so excited. I hope people do it. And I love, I'd love to see the way that um, strong is they're using strong in their own lives. Yeah. Same. Okay. So you guys can tag us on your Instagram stories. Um, We'll post the info in the show notes. So you know who to tag, but we're going to wrap up with just one final question. And this is really more geared toward you personally. Um, Like I shared something that we're really, we're really talking about more this year is being able to be bold with our gifts, but also to stop and acknowledge ourselves for the difference that we do make. So the question is pretty simple and it can be literally anything big or small. And that is what is a powerhouse moment that you have had in the last week or so where (laughs) you really stopped and you're like, okay, like I'm making an impact or I did that thing. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, in the last week? <laughs> or it could be in the last few weeks, you know. <laughs> Truthfully, I've been sick for a week, so I didn't I don't think I impacted very many people's lives in the last <laughs> week. Impacting their lives by staying quarantined. Um gee, I don't know. I mean I feel um I feel like a powerhouse and you know, I 
think I said to you earlier, every time I go to the newsstand and see uh, strong on stands, just, um, yeah. you know, our, our place in the world means so much to me. So uh, that's cool. Um, you know, just you inviting me on this podcast. I'm like, oh, wow. Lindsay Schwartz wants me on her podcast. <laughs> it's called Powerhouse Women. Oh, wow. I can't believe I fit into that description. Um, mm. So it's any moment like that where, because sometimes when you're working so hard and so so like constantly working, you know, I'm sure you can relate to that, that you're, you could always be working. It never ends, mm. right? Um, it's easy to get lost and not see the bigger picture in your place and things. So um, when I do go to events, you know, like Fitposium where we met uh, in Arizona um, or strong camps, we have these strong camps um, that tour the U S and when I go there and people come up to me and um, talk about how much they love strong and thank you. And I keep them meeting. Can I get a picture with you? It really sort of snaps me back into reality and um, Mm. helps give that perspective. And uh, yeah, I guess it's so many small moments I think um, that can add up to just giving myself that little boost of self-esteem and you know that's what motivates me to keep going so I can't really think of just one I'm sorry no (laughs) that is the the most perfect example of a powerhouse moment because what we want to remind women is that they are the small things it's Mm -hmm. that one text message or truly for some women it's hey I kept my kids alive this week that's my powerhouse moment no one died (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, because I think for myself, I can, I can speak personally and so many women that I know it's harder to stop and actually acknowledge ourselves for those small things. So mm-hmm. I love that you shared that. Thank you so much for being here and oh, everyone go out and get a copy of the latest strong magazine. By the time this airs, the March, April issue will be on newsstands, yeah, right? I happen to have it right here. Ooh, let's see. Oh, I'm obsessed with the vibe of this photo. I wish yeah. you could see it. If you're listening on audio, you're just going to have to go. <laughs> to wherever magazines are sold and mm-hmm. find a copy, tag us in a photo, and we're going to gift someone with a year subscription. So I can't wait to see who wins. Me too. So exciting. Yay. Kirsten, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure, Lindsay.